passion tomorrow. Let them see it. But again, join. We know now what we're fighting for together. The issues, representation, inducements, making sure that the union is following through on what the rules are. Stay, to, um, stay on the reservation, stay in the boat tomorrow, and let's show them that we're unified tomorrow. Everybody in this room with the same passion, Terry. You, you almost have to speak now tomorrow. Um, Peter, Jack Becker, 33rd year in the business, um, mid sized agent, represented about 15 players a year. Uh, we can't sue the union. We're suing our players, our clients. Let's call it what it is, right? So that's a very dangerous nuclear conversation to even be having. All right, so let's be very careful with the words we use, okay? Uh, inducements. We all know who the culprits are, and they're not in this room, right? We know who invented this model. They're not here. We hope they're not here. We think they're not here. I hope they're here. Yeah, or yeah, we do both of here, but we know who they are. And in my conversations with Big Ten coaches, with Bob Bolsby, uh, with um, conference directors, ABs, uh, compliance people at the university, if we form an association and the standards are so high that they back us, that's where we can gain some leverage. The, the universities, and the NCAA would stand behind us. That's a promise you. And for the record, all the people I think that you're referring to were in that meeting today. And I mean, if, if looks could kill, I wouldn't be sitting up here. Okay. <laughs> I got your back. Well, you'd have to sit up here. But they did also did not object. Okay? We asked everybody in the room when we presented the idea of publication of SRA terms, I said, is every agent on board? Yes. And every, we didn't hear a yes from everybody, and I said, well, let's do it this way. Is anybody opposed? And there was nobody opposed. Does that include cash? Who's that? Particular, some of the people you're referring to are we all on the cash. There was so nobody. How do you regulate us publishing list? Of what we charge, right? And the people who are not in the in the uh, association, you're not going to get everybody. I hope we do, but if you don't get those, people, <coughs> then we would. They didn't tell us what we just They did call our clients and say, "Why are you paying that guy three percent? I'll do it for you for two percent." You now give them their complete game plan to go after our clients. I would rather see you public who doesn't do it properly. Well, that's what we're talking about. We would have this list of agents that are members of the association, and they would include, I can tell you, of the big firms that were there today, for sure 95% of them. And we would then send them to all the athletic departments and say, these are the agents and agencies that are not only members of this association, but have signed up to have higher levels of ethics. Now, we sent the doc around maybe a year ago. I, I know I signed and sent Peter, big old John Hancock. But we would need 600 people to sign with their John Hancock. And if we do, we will send that list to the schools. These are the agents that are 100% on board. We want you to publish this list of those players. And if there are a couple of agencies that are not buying in, let their absence send the message, not their inclusion. Okay? Good. So that, that is the plan on that. Yes, sir. Have you guys actually worked on that model? I can't quite get past that 52 uh, week model based on, um, I mean, the program. Like, some, somebody starts getting paid right now for the 17 week season. But the season starts, this 52 week starts in March for, all right, so the season starts in March for the, the lead year. So now somebody essentially could get paid from March to September. Before they've actually, no, they've no, no. actually make the roster. So we would, I, I don't it, would go, it would go September, 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 August. So if you get a signing bonus or roster bonus, that would not be part of the 52. Okay. It would only be P5 type salaries. So roster bonuses don't are hard to Well, most roster bonuses now are paid out in, in segments. So they're sort of, and signing bonuses are 
paid, you know, 30 percent on site, 30 percent in October, 30 percent in January. So they sort of have a 52 week cycle on themselves. But the P5 salaries would start with the first game. When they earn P5 salaries, and that would then be prorated from September 1st to August 31st. If that makes sense. A question on the uh, amortization of the P5 salary. Wouldn't, uh, with the consideration of present value, why wouldn't any team sign up for that? Because uh, half a million dollars in August 31st of 2020 is worth a lot less than $100,000 on uh, February 28th of 2019. Interesting enough that this is the Houston Oilers for people that have been in the business that long, and, and now the Tennessee Titans and Steve Underwood who paid out like this, right? And there was always these issues that they were the outliers. So it has happened before, and I think when we looked at the issue of present value money, it was much more significant actually back then in the late 90s when the Titans did it because the interest rates were higher. Right now the interest rates are not that high, and so are you the present value of interest rates or the stock market, whatever. And yes, there is some issue with that. You would think teams would like it, I think it's not the present value that would appeal to the teams, it's actually the cash flow that appeals to the teams more. So I'm talking about uh, a team today that uh, Arizona, for example, they have the first pick in the draft. And their issue is that that's going to be a $21 million signing bonus. And that's going to account for 10% of their cash. And they said midday that they're going to pay, you know, pay it out over the next year, even though that's just because of cash flow. So I think it's more cash flow than present value. Even that makes my concern even greater. Who would what team would do it? Well, there may also be some, there may be some tax issues, and there may be issues as if the money's already been earned, whether it really has to be sitting in escrow, or who would to whom would the interest be owed? And, and it, it's not that simple. You can just put off the obligation. And before we go on, and I'm going to encourage everybody to stay in because obviously the we were sponsored by the XFL. Always the agent. We had to get someone sponsored. But the reason that we asked the XFL and, and, and Doug Whaley, who most everybody knows from being the general manager of the Bills, and why it appeals to me is because one of the things that his presentation is going to be is that as part of a player playing the XFL, the XFL is going to, and this is what we worked out, is going to pay the agent fee directly to the agent. All right. And so I want to encourage that everybody stay. Of course, so when we get stuck. We're going with the XFL. <laughs> he's already going to sign. <laughs> because of the fact that Doug has presented himself to us, and to me personally, as a person that's going to be very agent friendly. And I explained to him, and I'm sure here he is, Doug. Well, Doug, if you want to come up here. All right, hold on a second. Yeah. So when I explain to Doug that we, most everybody in this room is going to have someone in the Alliance League, maybe two, three, four, five, six players, and I'm sure now that we're in week three or whatever, it's week four, those players still expect to be treated as they should, like they're NFL players. And yet, good luck collecting, first of all, billing 3% of the 75 grand, if they even get paid all that, and then collecting it. 